this is off topic, but I want to answer a few things because I've got a lot of fan base and they always ask. So I'm going to do both, a bit of religion talk and a bit of my past. He's asked me, did I ever have any interactions with police back in the day when I was leading the nomads? I never had any drama of the police when I was leading the nomads. I had drama of the police when I first joined the nomads. This would have been in the year 2000. I was a nominee. I'll give you zig. I'll tell you one time what happened to me in the middle of King's Cross when I literally punched a. I won't use profanities. I'm trying not to use profanities, but I uh, smashed the officer high up as well. He was in his mid 50s. Not proud of it, but I never got charged because he was at fault. I had a few encounters with a few coppers. I had a few cases never, never went to blows, but they were still at fault. Where I, I swore at them, I threatened them, they didn't do nothing about it because. They couldn't because then it would come to light that they were picking on us and they were being racist towards me and they were being like aggression. So they never like pursued it. Everyone I bashed this copper, I'll tell you what happened. I was in the middle of King's Cross. And that was my base. I was always there with my cousins and all that. So anyway, <clears throat> I was a nom. And I used to always have to wait outside when all the members would go in, a few noms would stay outside. This was always a occurring thing every week when I run into the police. But this one time, I had a run in with a certain high up rank officer from the local one on the King's Cross. I don't know if it's called King's Cross Police Station or it's called Metropolitan. I don't know, but it's the one where the crossing is. He's came down, he's finished his shift, he's still in his police pants, boots, had his bag. He's gone, must have went to the pub, had a few drinks, because by the time he got to me, he was plastered. I obviously recognized him straight away. He's come up to me and I've said, Listen, you're not in uniform. Your shirt's off, you smell like alcohol, just fuck off. Long story short, went back and forth for a bit. He's like, move your bike, you can't park here. When I just got in his face, I was like, listen, you're not a, you're not a police officer right now, you're out of uniform, you're off duty, you got no right. So one thing led to another, and he's jarred me from my jaw. So when he's jarred me, I just kicked the fuck out of him, mate, straight out. Just opened up on him. You gotta understand, I was like young, I was in my, 18 in my prime. 18, I think it was 17, I don't know how. Different mentality back then. Just punched his fucking head in. Literally just smashed him. All the coppers came down. It, really, it went nowhere really because I'm like, if he's wanna arrest me, he's gonna have to see what happened. He's come up tipsy. He's jarred me in the face. Let's do whatever he's wanna do. Then they're like, oh no, he wants to fight you when he sobers up. This guy's 57 years old, something like that. Oh, he wants to fight me. I go, yeah. I must be taken back to the trip as well. I was like, what? He wants to fight? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, all right. Fuck. Where do you want to do this? They go, oh, at their center. Laced up gloves, this, that. At the time, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I thought about it, thought about it. And I thought, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Why well, does this guy want to fight in there, on their, like, turf, I call it? Gloves laced up. Mate, I'm not doing that. This guy must be a professional boxer or something. I don't know. Because when I smashed him, he was drunk. I thought, I just didn't want to do it. So I said, last minute, I think it was the day before or something, I ended up ringing up the cop and his number. And I said, no, nah, no. Nah, if we're going to do this, we're not doing this laced up. If I can do it in the street somewhere, pick whatever. I walk down police station. I met he's in the alleyway. And they're like, no, nah, we can't do that, mate. Rah, rah, it's going to be a charity fight. A fucking charity fight. So I pulled out of it. And the reason I'm saying this just in case it all comes to light. He can't turn around now, I don't know how old he's probably passed away now, he's in his late 70s. Well, I don't want someone that knows about it, Rich says, oh yeah, but he challenged you to a fight and you wouldn't fight him when he was sober. I didn't want to fight him when he was sober because first of all, I ain't a professional boxer. Secondly, my mentality back then was just punching out on the street. Who cares if he was drunk? I got the better off him, smashed him. I'm moving on with my ego intact. <laughs> so if you're gonna come out, if these officers are going to come and say, oh, yeah, but he challenged you and you wouldn't fight. I've got a lobby in my book. In my diary, 19, the blah, blah, blah. I'm saying it now. Yeah, he did want to fight me after it when he was sober. And I said, no, nah, I'm not doing it in the ring. I said, wherever I see him, he wants to do it on the street, do it on the street. So that's a scenario I had. I had another scenario with a motorcycle club as well. And King's Cross. All the noms, a few members were at the front. A few, like, you know those old, fat, beer-drinking... Just typical Yobos. 
they came into the city from, I don't know where they were on a national run, a few of them coming to town. Again, back then, I had the mentality, just any other club I'd say, I'd attack them on site. I was young and that's just what it was back in the early 2000s. Anyway, these, these clubs came down, they've come in, we've said you can't go into the clubs, they had their colours on and that, and they ran up, oh, we just want to have a drink, right? We said, they're not going in. Next minute, it's fucking on for young and old. I think there was about, I don't know how many of us there was, but we had outnumbered them, that's for sure. Because I remember it was like me and two other members on one guy. So we had outnumbered them, we smashed them. Yeah, it was fucking. I'm telling you stories he's asked for. He's a like tell stories when he's have had cracks in the cross and that. There's been so many cracks in the cross. Like I could tell you, so many, so many, so many dramas that I've had down in that fucking street. I'm telling you, he's look at me now. Yeah, he's on podcast. He's, he's already seen the friendly side and the joking around side. Obviously, there's two sides to every person. There's a serious side and there's whatever. I've just taken a different path in life. Back in my days when I was a gangster, everyone in Sydney will can't even dispute this. We were the baddest crew around in Sydney. That's the truth for many, many years. We like we were just all young in our early twenties. I would have been in my teens, to tell you the truth. I joined the club when I was like fifteen, so the first few years I was in my teens just running a mark in the club. Like when you call a gangster retired gangster whatever I'm still the person I am I'll tell you the example say I'm at a set of lights yeah I will try to avoid a drama if someone's staring at me at, if I put the lights and they say six seven bikies on, on their colours sitting there I'm going to try to avoid it obviously I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at them see what they're doing turn my face I'm going to look again if they're still looking I'm going to keep looking Obviously, I'm going to try to break the ice and not have a drama. But if they turned around and said to me, pull over, rah, rah, of course I'm going to pull over and I'm going to have it out of them. I don't care who it is or what they think they're capable of. I'm not a bikey or gangster, but I'm still who I am. Do you know what I mean? Like, I ain't going to get put on. I'm going to try to avoid the drama at all costs, but I'm not going to ever run. Or I'm never going to say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't want to fight. It's always going to be last resort. Let's get it on. You know what I mean? So people need to understand that. Like, people think, oh, bro, you're retired now, so that means you just put your tail between your legs and run away. Nah, 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 nah. None of that. You try to avoid the situation 1 million percent. You give them a way out of it, you try to be friendly. But if they turn around and say, come on, and they put their hands up and they want to go, you got to have a go. You're not going to run. No way in the world I'll run. So, I'm still the same person I am. I just handle it differently. You know what I mean? I could turn it up any minute of the fucking day if, if I have to, you know what I mean? And to these people that don't know me, I'm thinking, oh yeah, this guy's just on his on his video talking tough. Mate, I've been into every single prison in this country. Every prison in New South Wales I've been to, in Sydney. I've been to a few prisons in the state. I've walked the mains of all the prisons. I've interacted with every gangster you can think of. I've met every single person you can name in this country I've met. That's the who's who or what. So I, I, when I sit here and tell my stories, it's not like, oh yeah, I'm just some guy that was working fucking nine to five playing gangster. Well, gangster 24 seven. There was no there was no nine to five for me. Nine to five was me being gangster on the street. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like straight out, you know? So whoever thinks that, oh yeah, this guy's talking shit, mate. Next time you see him in the street, you want to turn it up? Turn it up, see what I'm about. I try to avoid it. I try to stay away from violence, but I'm sick of all these comments on my thing. A lot of people are commenting on my page. I just don't respond to it because I don't like doing internet dramas. I just think, oh yeah, when I see him, they want to fucking go, we'll go. A lot of people talk shit on my page and on my Instagram. I don't even fucking retaliate. I don't retaliate online. But to whoever's been talking trash about me, Test me in fucking person, walk up to me and see what I'm about. You see, I want you to walk up to me in person and try to say what you say online to my face. Then we'll see. You know? I sit here and try to fucking be positive and try to stay out of trouble and all that. But you fucking people need to realize if you stick in your million years that I'm not replying because I'm scared, I'm not replying because I don't do internet wars. 
But when I see you in person, I promise you, if you've got a problem, just walk up to me and we'll, you know, we'll sort it out. I ain't gonna back down, I ain't gonna run. Don't have a mistake of me being retired. Not retired, like walked away. To me, just dropping my balls. You know what I mean? There's, no, there's a fucking, there's a difference between being a gangster. I gotta put this in automatic. There's a difference between me being no longer a gangster, but still being a man. Like, you know what I mean? You think I'm walking in the street with a girl and I see four or five guys and I turn my face because I don't want a drama. And then they try to get in my face. They think I'm going to say, oh yeah, no, I don't want a drama. Mate, you're going to have to kill me straight the fuck out. I sit here and laugh at the comments I see of these guys, all these guys inbox me and they're like, ah, and I don't reply to them. They probably think, oh, this guy's scared. I don't know what type of people you are or what generation you come from. I come from a, a world where you don't yell into a phone, you don't type your drama, you just ignore it. And when you see that person that's been saying all these stuff, talking tough and right, then you do it. You don't go look for them, you don't ring them up, you just think, you know what, this guy's talked a lot of trash online and whatever. When I see him, he's going to know that there's a drama. You know, he's, he's not going to be expecting it because he's going to be thinking, oh, yeah. Look how much shit I've talked about him. He's never confronted us. Brother, I haven't seen you. Wait till I see you somewhere and you're with your girlfriend or you're with 100 cunts. I'm walking up to you. You're going to have to kill me on the camera. You're going to have to kill me. You know, kill me. That's the only way to stop how it's going to turn out when I see these cunts talking shit about me and I've been ignoring it. You're going to have to kill me. I don't respond to you online. So I ain't about that. I don't come looking for you because I've got better things to do. But when I see you, I believe this is everything's fate in life. And I think this is how I look at it. God's not letting me see these people because God doesn't want it to happen, what's going to happen. But if I do cross paths, then it's God's will. What's going to happen is going to happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows in my mind how I think. And I think to myself, if I see this person, that's it, it's destined. I don't know how it's going to pan out. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm confronting the people that have got problems with me. I'm not going to walk away. So that's the message to all the people that have been talking trash about me all this time and I haven't responded online I promise you I'm not going to do it online but I swear to you on everything when I see you in person I'm pulling straight up on you and I'm telling you that's if we're in the shopping center I'm going to say outside out in the car park if I see you in the restaurant I'm going to say outside if I see you anywhere and you're that cunt that's been talking shit I'm going to confront you if I know about it if I, if I look at that page and it's a real page and or someone shows me a real person talking about me, I don't confront them online. I'll wait until I see you. Then you'll see, brother, what you're made out of. i tell you how it's going to pan out for you. You're either going to get smashed, or you're going to smash me. <laughs> and if you smash me, then I am going to come looking for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, all I see is fucking, this cunt's talking shit about me, and all this trash, and I... I had this one person the other day, I was having lunch and they're like, post, post to us on Instagram. I go, what for? He goes, I want so-and-so to see it because we're talking shit about you and I want him to message. I go, he's been talking shit. He goes, haven't you seen what he said online about you? I said, nah. He's like, I thought you seen it. I'm like, nah, bro, I didn't see it. Anyway, he brought to my attention this guy's been saying. I said, don't call him, don't post to me. Leave it. When I see him, I'm going to walk up to him and I'm going to have a go with him. Let's see what he's made out of. And every time I see you, it's going to be on. You're going to be one day walking with your missus. You're not going to want the drama that day. You're going to be exhausted and I'm going to still come pull up on you. Win or lose, every time I see you, it's on. <laughs> you coward cunts talking trash. All I hear is people talking trash about me. And the funny thing is none of these people have met me before. He's never met me in your lives. He's all got something bad to say about me. And there's not one occasion you could say, oh, I met this bloke in person and all right, all right. You don't know me. Why are you talking? I'll tell you why you're talking about me. I'll tell you why. You go for your missus' phone when she's asleep and you see all her history is me. Or you go through your sister's phone and all you see is me. Or if you're an older cunt talking shit, you're going through your daughter's phone and all you're seeing is me. It has to be the only reason you fucking hate me because I've never done nothing wrong to you cunts. I don't talk about yous. I don't fucking know yous. 
For you to have all these opinions and theories about me, it comes to one conclusion. Jealousy, my friends. Jealousy. If it's not jealousy, I don't see he's talking about the homeless guy down the road. I don't see he's bagging out the average Joe Blow. Only fucking person he's bagged out is me. Or somebody in this country, whether he's like it or not. Everyone knows who I am in this country. And that's something you can't even dispute. He's my soul, oh, this guy's up himself. Nah, I'm speaking facts, mate. He's only bagged me because he's jealous. I swear to you, he's a jealous of me. That's why he's bagged me. And he's got nothing better to do with your fucking lives besides run me through the dirt, you cowards. Do you know what I mean? But the reality is, you don't know me. You've never seen me in your lives. You fucking jealous cunts. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up because I'm going to pull up somewhere. I love you all. My thoughts and praise are with all the Muslims around the world getting attacked. If you're a Jew out there and you've got a problem with me, by all means, and you want to discuss it civilly, by all means, inbox me. I'll bring you on to the show. Tell me your point of view. And let me see if you can have any legitimate fucking argument. Leave it at that. Take care.